Making and Using Hunting Stools. William Hovey Smith, 2012. I'm Hovey Smith, and I go out there and hunt. Well, sometimes hunting tools come apart, and sometimes you need to fix them. And this is exactly one of those times. What happened was, guess what? I found this frame for a stool out there in the woods somewhere years ago. And I had picked it up with the idea of someday putting a seat in it. More recently, I made a holster for this revolver. And what I used was fabric from a bag that you can buy at Walmart to haul around groceries. And the reason I use this bag, because it's made out of a synthetic, somewhat rot-resistant fabric. However, the fabric is weak. And that is why this holster is reinforced all around with nylon. And for this use, and reinforced with nylon, and also with the installation of a nylon strap, as well as two cloth straps, yeah, the holster has done very well. However, having fabric left over from that bag, I decided to use it to make a seat with this. Sewed up saying, and, well, it failed. It actually lasted about three days, but ultimately it did rip. And it was a fabric failure, not a failure in the stitching. So, what to do, obviously, replace it with a stronger cloth. So that's what we're about doing right now. Get rid of that, get some room out here. Before me is a canvas drop cloth. I picked this up on the side of the road. <laughs> it blew off some poor painter's truck. Well, I don't know if he painted poorly or not, but at any rate, he is a poor for losing his drop cloth. So that's what we're going to use. Now this seat adjusts out like this. And obviously, the wider the spread, the lower the seat. Now for me, I want it about like yay, which gives me a, a distance where my knees will rest comfortably. So that is about a span of 12 inches. Well, yeah, 12 inches. So, you want an inch wrap around here, so that's 13, 14, and you want at least a couple of inches of cloth on the other side, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I need 18 inches of cloth, about yay much cloth, to wrap around and actually uh, bake the seed itself. So I'm going to be about cutting that up. Now, obviously, the drop cloth is much wider than 18 inches. And it has a turned sewn edge here, which I certainly want to preserve. So this will be one edge here, and then I'll cut me an 18 inch rectangle of cloth and actually start sewing up. Okay. Okay, uh, this stuff's breaking out here. Now we know the length needs to be 18 inches.
18 inches down, be here. Now cloth has a weave, so you can use the threads itself as sort of a mark. So you cut more or less a straight line. Well, I was never a good straight line cutter, even when I was in the first grade, and have not improved my skills very much since, but that'll do. All right? So that's that line. We need to do something with this edge here. So we'll continue to cut that out so straight. scissors in the world. Okay. It'll tear better. Yeah. Alright. Expedient. Okay. Measure our widths again. again, and that will fairly well 
bind it sufficiently to hold the knot. And pass it back through. All right. Do it again if you want to. Okay. And now you can cut that off, and that stitch will hold. So we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side, and uh, then we'll give it a field test. Structurally, we now have our stand completed, and that it's got both layers of stitching here done with the fishing cord. So these are pretty strong bonds here. And to finish, take regular, regular thread, regular cotton thread, and turn the edge like this and stitch these edges. The cotton thread is not going to add much in the way of strength, but you don't want to use the monofilament fishing line here because it will abrade your, yourself and your fabric and also uh, perhaps make a rasping noise against clothes when you move. So that's the reason you don't want to do that. And so you do that on both sides. For additional reinforcement, you can take a small piece of nylon here and run it about like this with approximately an inch extending back over the lip. Now what this will do will reinforce these seams. You do not want to do this. If you do that, this will bind and it would be very uncomfortable whether you belong to the hunt naked movement or not. Uh, yeah. But it would be helpful, uh, say about an inch here and about an inch here. So that would give maximum reinforcement to this canvas seat. For yet further strength, yes, you could keep adding layers of cloth or fabric using this as a base and sewing too. Uh, that could be done. But basically, for me, uh, the seat is about completed. So I'm going to take this out and hunt with it tomorrow and hopefully shoot a deer from it. Well, our stew is now complete. So we did whip up the edges here with thread. And we did go ahead and put the nylon reinforcing here by just coming down an inch or so, as you see. Now I could take this stew just like you see it into the woods and hunt. But Almost invariably, I will also use a cushion, like here, and sit like yay. Typically, when I carry it, this strap goes over the shoulder, so the cushion hangs from the side like this, and the stool goes like that, so I can carry it very easily through the woods uh, without uh, having both hands tied up, or any at all for that matter, and without having to make so much noise. So this is a good combination that I've used to kill, oh, I don't know how much stuff, but uh, lots of game over the years. But uh, you know what? That works, and most of it you can do yourself. Now here is a blind. And I have my seat and cushion in it. I've opened the front and back so you can see it. Actually, I would close about half of the front opening and shoot out of the left-hand corner. I'm looking into the blind. I'm looking at the left-hand corner now. And you can see the stool and the cushion. And the gun is pointing in the direction I would expect to shoot. The stool is canted at 45 degrees, so I can shoot comfortably from the right shoulder. If you put the square in center, then, uh, then you have to twist around to make a shot. So you might as well orient the stool correctly in the first place. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, where I discuss many practical things for going out and getting deer and other game. Got crossbow hunting, extreme muzzle loading, and also practical bow fishing. And yeah, that really was a blunderbuss that you saw in one of those frames.
Now, I have several videos, the Blunderbuss Chronicles, on the W.M. Hovey Smith YouTube channel. For more information on my books, blogs, videos, and radio show, Hovey's Outdoor Adventures, you can go to my website, www.hoveysmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.